Hello wonderful people, welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. My name's Steph, and on this channel we usually talk about book reviews, anime and manga reviews, play some games, do some art and stuff, maybe some vlogs. Today I have a book review video for you, and this is for one of my favorite books of 2020 by far, and that is The Monk by Matthew Gregory Lewis. Now I read this quite a while ago, earlier this year, and it took me a while to really gather my thoughts on this because I wanted to make sure that I gave you a quality spoiler-free review uh, without, <laughs> without going too in-depth and making sure that I wasn't spoiling it because it's so hard to talk about this without spoiling it. So here we go. Um, the Monk was written by Matthew Gregory Lewis when he was only 19. And for this amazing piece of gothic horror fiction, it was just incredible. So it blows my mind that he was so young when this was written. But it was finished in 1776, so this is a fairly old novel. Um, that being said, given that it's been over 200 years, the shock value of this is not lost on me. It is incredibly dark, incredibly deep. We have so many characters that we're following, we're actually following um, similar multiple storylines that kind of cross over eventually. And I mean, all right, let me let me start by giving a little bit more information before I go into actually the events of the book. So we have some serious trigger warnings here. I mean, I tried to make a small list, but I suggest that you do your full research before you actually pick up this book. But so far, the trigger warnings that I have are murder, rape, death of a child, sexual assault, torture, incest, matricide, and if religious satire pisses you off, then do yourself a favor and avoid this one. But it's so well done. I blew through this book. I actually picked it up as a buddy read and this is something that I would not have picked up on my own. And after reading this, I am trying to decipher whether it was this book in particular or whether it's gothic horror in general, which piqued my interest because I'd not read a gothic horror prior to this, but I absolutely loved it. Um, so just before I start talking about it one more time, I do want to mention that this book was extremely scandalous at the time. I believe it was banned for a while, and part of that is because it is a critique on Catholicism, and it's it's created in the backdrop of the Protestant Reformation. So this is a time in history where Catholicism was being questioned and whether various religious practices would be able to change and allocate ways in which religion is practiced. So it was so scandalous because of the subject matter that it touched on and its, its core focus is really on uh, purity and sexuality and fetishizing purity and sexuality and chastity. And because of how scandalous it was, it actually pushed more people to read it and my god it was so interesting so the story that we're following technically is focused on a monk named ambrosio so ambrosio was brought to the monastery as a young child so he spent his entire life within the church and he's become such a symbol uh, within the monastery as a symbol of purity and strength through the sermons that he delivers, um, that he's on track to become labeled as a saint. And this takes place in Madrid. And so we're following Ambrosio kind of through his fall from grace because in the beginning of the story, he's giving a sermon. So we get a demonstration of how many people come out to listen to Ambrosio and how passionate his speeches are. And he's extremely pure, he's never had sex, um, he's never really been outside the monastery. And one day he is 
walking through the chapel, I believe, and he sees a piece of paper fall from a nun's habit. When he picks it up, he finds out that it's a note to her lover and that she had been having sex in the convent and she's now pregnant, so she made plans with her lover to escape from the convent to go lead a, a normal life. And he decides to let the head of the convent know and she ends up getting punished for this and cursing him as she's being taken away. So that brings us into this split road where we then follow two storylines now. So we're following the story of Ambrosio and how he's regretting that he let this nun named Agnes um, fall into a serious punishment knowing that she's pregnant, um, but also following his storyline where where other chapters are following the story of Agnes and Raymond. So Agnes is the pregnant nun and Raymond was her lover. So we're following their story separately from the story of Ambrosio. So Ambrosio's story is that there is a monk within the monastery named Rosario and Rosario comes in and his face is covered because of some burns that they've received from a fire but we quickly find out and I know that this may sound spoilery but this is all within the beginning of the book and sets the pace for everything else that Rosario is actually a female who disguised herself as a male to fit within the monastery so that they can get closer to Ambrosio. Um, so Ambrosio tries to ask them to leave once they've divulged their secret to him and they said that they would like Ambrosio to give them a rose before they leave so that they can be um, remembered by Ambrosio. So he goes to pick a rose and in which case he gets bitten by a creature, um, I believe it either was a snake or a centipede, in the rose bush and falls ill. So it goes from there and my goodness. Okay, so I think I'm going to start on the story of Ambrosio first. So this gets very dark very quickly. Um, without divulging too much of the storyline, I guess I'm just going to focus on a few aspects. Um, so in the beginning of the story, we learn that Ambrosio has a painting of the Virgin Mary in his room, and because he's never had sex before, he talks about having these fantasies with himself and the Virgin Mary, and there's something that we find out much later on that is a plot twist that I definitely didn't see coming, but what... Matthew Gregory Lewis might have been trying to do here was critiquing social norms. So what is it about his ideas or his sexualization or fetishization that he's trying to get out of his human nature by pushing it to the side and associating it with sin that is the actual core of his guilt? So is it the fact that he spills lust or is it the fact that purity in itself is lustful so the rest of his story goes downhill very quickly we have necromancy we have a deal with the devil um, he ends up obviously breaking his vows and I just suggest that you read it it may sound very typical of a gothic horror from my research because I haven't read too many gothic horrors it may sound like it's full of very familiar tropes but I highly suggest that you read it because every plot twist within this book was well worth the wait um, and for 400 pages I mean I plowed through this fairly quickly but on to the story of Agnes and Raymond so their story ended up being a majority of the middle section of the book, but it all came back and tied around. So we did follow the adventures of Raymond prior to and while Agnes was being detained. And 
there was a section of his story where it talked about this character named the bleeding nun and i have to say that i was pretty freaked out by this more than i thought i would because i don't usually get creeped out by ghost stories and poltergeist and things like that but the way that this was written was actually kind of funny and scary at the same time so there's a portion in the story where he is um trying to help agnes uh, run away with him and they're using the cover of the tale of the bleeding nun which is this um woman who's haunting this castle home and she comes out at night during a certain time and the gatekeeper opens the gate so that the nun can go out every night or every so often um, so that she doesn't remain haunting the house so so i'm not going to tell you how the nun becomes this prominent figure within the story but there is a portion where raymond ends up getting haunted by the bleeding nun and what what happened is every night when he would go to sleep, I believe around one in the morning or two in the morning, the nun would come to his bedroom and he would be paralyzed with fear. His eyes would be open. He would see the nun come into his bedroom and she would kind of just either stare at him or or sexually assault him or I, I don't quite remember, but she would just be in his face for like one to two hours every night and then just leave and he would then be unparalyzed and be able to get up and be freaked the hell out and i found that kind of really funny but the thought that a ghost would just be in your face just staring at you for two hours and you can't close your eyes and you can't look away from it that sounds so torturous and how he thought of that it, it was it was just perfection so that was one of my favorite moments of this book but i definitely suggest that you guys all pick this up it is extremely interesting it takes a turn that you would not see coming and i was actually very satisfied with the ending i could see how some people may not be satisfied with it um, because it's kind of in a way open ended but also not we do get full explanation of everything and full disclosure but i think that some people may be going into this wanting a deeper discussion on morality and we don't really get that it's simply very much character driven and just dealing with the repercussions of their choices so highly recommend it this was a five star read and I will be shoving this down everyone's throat who is willing to take this level of torture. So, I hope that you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. See you next time. Bye!